Hey guys, how are y'all doing? How is your day going? And if you're just touching, how was your night? Hope you had an amazing and a beautiful night rest. So yeah, today is day seven. Three more days to go and we're going to be done with this Python 10 days crash course. So um, yeah, today we're going to focus on Python as an object-oriented programming language. So object-oriented programming is the whole um, idea of um, using codes, using programs to represent real-life objects. So um, an, an object is an instance of a class. It's the representation of a real-life, you know, like human beings, cars, and other shit like that. Um, so it is made up of two things, which are your attributes and your method. So your attributes come like the definition, what the object is made up, its features, looks, maybe age, name, depending on the object you're working with. And methods are the actions that the given object can carry out, talk, dry, sleep, die. <laughs> so um, a class. So a class is a blueprint. It's a guide to help you create um, creating an object. And defining a class is very simple. So first is the topic class and secondly giving it your class name so class name your comma and here you're not passing your statement your argument you have your um your oh shit um hmm. <laughs> you have your attributes and your methods so let's create a simple class for um human beings let's change this to human because i'm only human now, when you want to take your attributes, there's one thing I should introduce you to. First thing is called your initialization function. That is a double underscore init double underscore. It's a constructor. So what this does is basically identifying your class as a class to help you create objects. It's, I honestly don't know how to explain this. But like just see it as something you need to initialize your class. So when you are calling it, it's within this um is within this your init attribute that you're going to call or your um within this init function they are going to call all your attributes so define init is very simple i've been calling it an init function so you're going to define it as a function then double underscore init double underscore now in your parentheses the first thing you must always pass is yourself this to personalize it so you are going to say every single thing that is passed into this um class where you are creating an object Take this, um, these variables and create an attribute for this given object and assign it to this specific object and so that the object, the, the personal object that is in question can access the ones which have been assigned to them. I know that there's some who have explained it better on the internet. So you can meet the person. I'm not really good with theoretical and explaining and all the shit. But, um, so um, we have called ourselves. The next thing you want to take is like, maybe we, as soon as a human being, we want a name and um, we want an age. Okay, then um, next we want to now personalize. So, what I've just asked for variables, we have not done anything with this variable. So, we need to assign it. So, we're assigning it using the self. So, self dot name, and we're assigning the name variable into it. And same thing for self dot age. So, we have initialized our created attributes. Now, let's create a method. So, creating method is still the same. Is um, you use functions to create methods. So, when you're creating a method, you just use um, def, let's say. Um, what do human beings do? Eat. Then we're just going to pass self. And um, so we don't want to do anything complex now. So let's just print um, eating. I don't know. What the fuck did I just? Okay. So we'll save that. And um, yeah. So we have created a class now. We've successfully created a class. Now let's um create an object using this class. The process of creating an object is called I keep forgetting how to pronounce it. Instant. <laughs> okay, go and Google it. I n s t a n c i c i o n. Yeah. Okay. So creating an object, you call the object name you want. Assign it called the class. And um, you now assign all the all the needed. Um, variables excluding self so um that's all the parameters that we need so that is name and age so for name is a string don't forget your inverted comma we have my name and um we're not passing an age 
So we can save it now. We have created an object. So how do we access the object? Let's call some of the basic things. It's just it's just similar you will have you are familiar with calling um other things since you have been working on programs. You want to call the person's name is going to be um, p one dot name. Let's print it. Okay, same thing for age, same thing for when you are calling the method. So if you want to call the it method. So now we have just declared it as we have just picked up the position at where the method is. But if you want to initialize the action that is in the method, you just add your parentheses. After it, very simple, run it. And it's going to call the it eating for us. So um that is basically it. So now let's Okay, cover some fundamental concept of object oriented programming. The first one is abstraction, that is the creating of objects we've just covered. Second one is encapsulation. This is the hiding of data. So that I, like hiding the complexity so that um outside people, outside of people who it doesn't really concern wouldn't see it and you make them more confused, stuff like that. For example, when you're working with app is of app, when you get your code and you implement in your program, do you know the proof the amount of code that is running behind the scenes? No, because it's been encapsulated or when you are installing um, models here in Python, you just install the models and you just access them, but you don't really know the code that is going on behind the scenes. So all those are encapsulation. So encapsulation is hiding of your code to prevent um, outsiders from viewing the complexity whilst also giving them the ability to make access of what is within your program. Okay. Um, inheritance. So you everyone knows what inheritance is. is the ability for um a, ch a, a child class to inherit from its base class. So if we are declaring, an, uh, if we want to define an inherited class here, so it's very simple. You just call um, class, then you call um the name of what you want the child class to be, just like how you define every other class. The only difference now is in you call the parentheses and then you're going to call the classes is inherited, is inheriting from. So I say classes because you can inherit from more than one class, same as you can inherit from both your parents. You can inherit from more than one class. Now, if you just leave it at this and you pass it, if you assign, okay, let's do this. So let's assign, let's call the parents class here and let's define for the parents instead of the child. And um, let's print P1 into it and see if we're going to still be able to access that function. Like you can see, it's parents we assigned it, so we didn't assign it to human. And you can see we can see access it because now he has inherited everything. But let's go a step further. Let's um add some setting. Let's add a new variable that is only present to this parent. Because if we have multiple classes inheriting from the base class, we want to have certain things that are differentiating them from the other. So um let's call our init function ha init. Okay. So I've called our init function. So now I've picked up the two things that were declared up here prior to um, when we're working. But let's also now want now like when you're inheriting from you know, this is super function that I usually call. I don't know how to explain it honestly, but um, let's just call that. And we're now passing all the variables that we mustn't be every single variable that was called in the parent class, but all the variables that you want to make use of. So let's just leave that name and age. Then over here, let's get our new um something we want to take. So let's say it's child. And um below it, we're now going to just um assign the value of our child just the same way we did it everywhere else. Self the child equals to child. And now when we're calling it after I've called age, we're going to call the amount of children this person has, and we're going to print child. So let's save that. I called also oh I called dev twice. Why am I not noticing all these things? All right, there you go. So um, that is basically um okay. There's another thing called polymorphism. So this is when a class can implement um or can inherit a certain method and implement it in different ways. So um, for example, if you have multiple classes. Unless there was a particular method that we declared in the base class and all of them, like I said, you can a multiple class can inherit from one class. 
So all of them now um, pick a certain method that was present in that class and start implementing it in a way that is own like is different. Like the way um class A will implement it will be different from the way class B will implement it. It's still one method that was called, it's still one name that is going to be used to access the method, but the implementation is different. So that is polymorphism has been implied poorly in many ways. But yeah, this video was shorter. That is every single thing there is in object. That is not every single thing there is, but that is the base everything we're going to be covering if you have any other question though feel free to ask me in the comment this is a crash course i'm trying to run through everything quickly but if you want a did more detailed explanation on the giving thing you can let me know in the description below until then thank you all for watching have a nice day bye guys